Welcome to the Evergreen Cemetery in Bushwick, where the weather is nice, but the weathering is terrible. This cemetery is right next to where I live, and apparently it was also a key battle site in the Battle of Brooklyn, and uh, America lost that one. The land is a rare tin formation, so it's composed of clay, silt, sand, and gravel. And this developed around 60 to 100 million years ago. That's a pretty broad range. It's too bad rocks don't have like dates carved into them or anything. Um, you can kind of see the composition of the ground in this picture. Um, I'm guessing the sky was really short. Interestingly enough, the soil also might be highly radioactive in many parts, but we'll get to that later. The graves date back all the way to the 1800s, so like all of these guys died without having any idea what continental drift was. This grave is actually from a person who died in the same year that Lord Kelvin published a paper suggesting the Earth might be as young as 20 million years old. A majority of the graves look like they've been made of marble or granite. The former type is practically legible today. Like some of these graves need graves. Granite stones, on the other hand, from around the same time period remain far less weathered. New York City is in sort of a sweet spot, as indicated right here by the star. Warm, wet summers and seasonal climates allow moisture to develop in tiny eroded cracks in rock, only to freeze and expand during the winter, and this freezing and thawing is what causes that type of mechanical weathering. There's also biological weathering, which includes here lichen growth. The lichen is actually excreting a type of acid, which also erodes the surface of the graves. The most common type of weathering happening in the graveyard is chemical weathering, or dissolution by acid rain. Granite is largely made up of feldspar and quartz. Um, so here's a really cool example of very pink colored granite, um, which is a result of an abundance of potassium feldspar within the granite. Um, and a more gray granite like this suggests the presence of more quartz. And structurally, these two minerals are very different from marble, which is made up of calcium carbonate. Both graves are from the 1880s, um, and for reference, here is a marble grave from the 1880s. Marble is a metamorphic rock, which initially looks beautiful and pearly white, like this fine lady's head, um, and it has really weak chemical bonds, so this makes it easy to carve and polish, and all of these might be reasons that this kind of gravestone was really popular in the day, but the weak chemical bonds also make it really susceptible to attack from acids. So when acids and polluted air rain down, the rain reacts with calcite in the marble and the calcite dissolves. Um, so you see roughened surfaces and gradual erosion over time. One point air pollution, you know, it'll get you and it'll dance on your grave. Um, unless your grave is granite. Um, so one point for granite also. A little peak of a place where it's shifted shows you how the marble used to look. Look at the texture. I want to put lotion on it, but I can't. It wouldn't help. Not at all. It's the calcium carbonate. On a different and worse note, I recently found out my home is very close to one of the most radioactive places in New York City. So this pin is currently a auto shop, but it sits on top of land which was formerly owned by the Wolf Alport Chemical Company, and from the 1920s through the 1950s, they extracted metals from imported sand. During the process of this, they produced waste, which contained not one, but two different radioactive elements, thorium and uranium, and it disposed of them by dumping the waste into sewers and also by burying it, according to federal sources. Now, I know what you're thinking radioactive material seeping into the resting place of thousands of revolutionary soldiers. Sounds like zombies with muskets. There's no scientific basis for this concern, but the businesses that all sit along this hotspot are being forced to reckon with a bunch of problems, so there's slightly higher risks of cancer, and also increasing pushes from the EPA to close up shops so that the location can be restored. Many of the businesses themselves argue that the tiny increase in cancer risk is not worth shutting down for. But for the residents of the Evergreens, you know, cancer is the least of their worries. Because they are deceased. The history here is fascinating, and I hope you think so too. Thanks!